Welcome to Richard Skill Modeling. This is part 3 of the FX North American Mustang Scale 1 to 24. In part 2, I uh, made up the cockpit and called the fuselage. In part 3, I'm going to be concentrating on the wings and the landing gear. So let's get into this build. So to start off with, I'm using Tamiya's X10 gun metal. And uh, as you can see here, this is for the machine gun. Tamiya's XF56 metallic grey. I'm using this colour for the surrounding areas of the ammo track and it's Revel Aquacolor 92 Brass and this, this is for the casing of the shell and then I'm moving on to Revel Aquacolor 90 Silver and this is for the actual bullets themselves that's a bit small to show you here but um, it took a bit of time to paint this now depending on what uh, weapon you're, you're going to be putting on I'll dictate um, how many holes you're going to have to drill and um, which location. I'm just putting on the drop tanks, I'm not actually putting on any weapons. But if you refer to the instructions, it's all clearly marked uh, for you to decide which one you want to go for. On the underside of the wing, there's a couple of, well, three little lights you have to paint, and I'm using Tamiya's X27 Clear Red. And I'm moving on to X25 Clear Green. And the final one is X24 Clear Yellow, all by Tamiya. Also, as I said in the other video, uh, the previous video that is, I masked off the surrounding area where these lights are going to go, so I don't have to mask off. For the prep work for the wings, first of all, I have to put in the hinges for the cover for the landing gear. And once that was in, time to uh, place in the machine guns. Now, the location points for these are wrong. Um, if you use the location points, two of the barrels of the machine guns won't come out of the wings. In fact, they're very, very short, about um, five millimeters short of the edge of the wing. Um, so you're going to have to um, adjust that if you want the weapon showing. And now it's uh, putting in the ammo racks. Now be careful of the position in here. If you are having them on display, you may find it easier to put the top half of the wing on first before you place these in a position. You can do it, it takes, it's a little bit more fiddlier to do, you know, a little bit of adjustment, but yeah, it's easier in the long run. So now I'm putting in the three lights and they just slot in the um, hole there. I didn't have to um, open them up or anything. So now I'm making up the landing gear. Um, very simple process, just like the real landing gear. You make up the caps first. Um, uh, both sides are separated with a, a, a little uh, bar and and they just sit onto each other. And then once they're dry, just push the hub cap through. Um, it's a little bit tight, but it's easier than pushing one half in than trying to uh, cement the other half inside. So just uh, push it in. They are, they, it's a rubber, so it is pliable and uh, they should fit okay. And once um, it's in, just uh, place the um, column into the centre of the hubcap. You will probably have to glue this. Um, I don't think uh, leaving them free moving is an option. They'll probably just fall off. And now it's time for the flap. Just uh, two halves put together. Shouldn't challenge you at all. Now it's time to fit the flaps. Now you can do this, of course, when the um, wing is um, when you're putting on the um, top half of the wing. But it's easier just to fit them in now. Remember and leave off the cement um, at the tips if you want them free moving. Next is the landing gear, and you have to put this on before you attach the wings. Um, so they go up through the landing gear cavity and it fits into uh, a little um, bay here, and it should just clip in. If you don't want them free moving, I suggest gluing them into place uh, just to keep them nice and sturdy. But that will be up to yourself. And then it's the covers for the landing gear. I would say, though, I'm, I'm sorry about the, the light bouncing off uh, the model here. Um, it, the, the sun was uh, streaming through the window. The, there wasn't much I can do about it. So that just uh, pops in um, against uh, the landing gear to fit the top portion of the wing. There's not much uh, explaining needed to be done, just uh, a couple of uh, parts are cemented together. I will say you will need a couple of clamps though uh, to secure it. 
and once the wings are dry they just slot into the uh, bottom of the solution lodge here um, a little bit tight which was uh, nice there was in in the end um, a little bit of gapping for the wing root that you normally get nothing major um, tiny bit of filler that's all that was needed the uh, underside fitted well to the fuel lodge also now making up the rear wings um, there's four parts to this the um, flaps as well as the um, main wing I would suggest uh, building them on to each other it's just uh, easier that way you can build the, the two parts separate and push them in but the fits, fits actually quite tight so um, I found it better to do it this way especially if you're putting in on the hinges or the brackets if you want them frame moving this is only the real way to do it I didn't want them free moving, I wanted them in a sort of state. Um, but even though this is still the way to go, I think. And once the flop is in position, then it, it was just a matter of closing up the wing with the other half. You will probably need uh, some clamps just to hold it together here. And now for the drop tanks, um, simple construction. Uh, I'm placing on the um, release uh, bracket first. The reason for that is just easier to hold and manoeuvre. Um, I do it different ways all, all the time. Um, it all depends on the builder, how they want to do it. And once they were assembled, it was a level up for 99 aluminium. Um, I've left them slightly attached to the sprue, um, just a little bit. So I didn't have to handle them too much while I was painting. And then it was on to Tamiya's X32 Titanium Silver. And this was just for the little cap on the drop tank. So now I'm placing a, a tiny bit of filler onto the wing roots. Um, didn't meet, need much at all, just a very small uh, little bit really. Um, as common with me now, I'm using my own filler. This is melted down sprue. It's very simple to do. I do have a video uh, of it, of how I make it if you wish to go and have a look, look at it. The rear wings slotted in nicely, um, just push them in. You may have to put a little bit of pressure on to, to place them in, uh, but not too much. You shouldn't have any problem whatsoever with it. I didn't need any filler for the wing roots on this one. Now it's time to go back to the underside and I'm just putting on the um, covers uh, for the under uh, for the landing gear on the carriage here. Uh, they, they just sit inside the bracket. For this air and take the grill. I used Tamiya's XI-56 metallic grey. Then it was 99 aluminium by Revo Aquacolor for the outer casing. And once it was all dry, um, there it is. Uh, it just, the cover just gets uh, pushed onto it, uh, like so. You may have a little bit of gapping, um, depending how well you've cleaned it up. Make sure you clean this part quite well before you place it on uh, to get a tight fit. And once it's dry, just push it on into the uh, circle column here. Um, it shouldn't need any adjustments for it to fit, but well, mine's didn't. It just pushed on. Next are the drop tanks, and these are getting it. Uh, the position is the two little holes that I drilled uh, while well, preparing the wings. You can just about make the holes out on the right there next to the wheel. Next to go on is the um, housing for the underside of the nose cone that should just fit just underneath where the prop is going to go after a little bit of light sanding it's time to paint so the uh, entire color is going to be whatever color 99 aluminium this is going to be all over apart from a little flash at the top and that'll be where the um, canopy sits but i'll get on to that here i'm painting the covers that's uh, for, for the top of the wing and the inner part of this cover is XF 71 Corporate Green by Tamiya. And these are for the covers that would initially cover the um, machine guns and ammo track. But if you're not displaying them, you don't have to paint the inside, obviously, like I'm doing. I'm also using the same colour for the inside uh, part of the canopy uh, cradle. So now it's time to put on one of the sensors. I actually put this in the wrong position. So I, will, I, I do take it off later on and they'll be able to reposition it. And then it's uh, painting the top side. And again, it's a uh, Revel Aquacolor 99 aluminium. 
You notice there, I'm using a, a wider brush here, and it's a flat brush. This just helps uh, get rid of any brush stroke marks that may may come off while you're brushing. It's a sporty beam that runs in the centre of this cradle. Um, the location points are just right on the side of it, that it's easy enough to fit. Next to go in the cradle is the little hinge that holds it in place. You don't necessarily have to paint this because you really don't see it. I'm just painting it, painting it because it's there. So then it's time to fit the canopy. Um, that, that goes on easily enough. It's quite a nice fit. You won't have to do anything to the canopy apart from fit it onto the cradle. I'm using Mr. Hobby's H28 Metallic Metal Black. And this is for the little black um, heat deflector set, uh, slash in front of the cockpit. And then it's on to Rebel Aquacolor 426 Needle Olive. And this is for the flash of colour that generally runs down uh, the front of the plane from the canopy onwards. I'm not putting on the coverings of the engine block, I've decided on that, uh, so I can sort of show the engine. So it's only the uh, first part on the fuselage that's getting this colour. So now I'm fitting the covers for the ammo tracking machine gun. Um, I'm just having these in the upright position. I'm not exactly sure how they're meant to go. Um, because there's no piston uh, rods or anything to uh, keep them upright. So just a simple bit of cement along the um, leading line before placing them on. And then I placed the second half of the cover, um, just shown it here, on the back of it. And that also helps support it. And it was the same with the um, main cover, the, the thinner one. Um, just uh, along the uh, bits of it along the edge, and uh, just lay it down at an angle. Uh, and I kept my thumb there until it's set. As I say, I'm not sure if that was the correct position or not, but it looked okay to me. Really, at the end, that's all it counts, as long as uh, the builder's happy with it. And um, it just so happens, I like the look at how oh, they're lying there. Put the front part of the car and paint. This is the only part of the car you need to paint. The bottom part is getting painted in the 46 native olive colour. And the main struts or framework is painted in 99 aluminium. So it's just a very small part of canopy painting on, on this kit. So now I'm putting on the aerial mast. And if you remember earlier on, I put that little um, round piece uh, on and I said I had to move it. So this is me moving it now. I actually had it in position where the aerial mast was. It's just me, I didn't look at the instructions properly. Luckily I had it set by the time I realised. Last of the painting is the locator light, so it's um, Tamiya's X27 clear red, then the other side will be X25 clear green. You don't have to worry too much about the position here because there's a little nub of plastic, it just sticks up from the wing. Um, that's where the paint goes. Be careful not to um, file that off thinking that it's a, a little bit um, of flash that you need to clear up. That's everything on really, uh, it's just a case of touching up a bit of bit work and I'm adding Tamiya's X32 titanium silver one, small, just to um, highlight details uh, on the wings, on, on the fuselage as well. And then it's time to place on the canopy, so the front part first, then I'll be moving on to the rear part. Well I'll bring this uh, part to a close now, part 3. In part 4, I'll be putting on the decals, uh, doing a bit of weathering, and um, of course I'll be the final reveal video as well. So if you haven't done so already, why don't you check out the other videos on the channel. Subscribe to that channel as well for um, updates and um, new builds that I've got planned for the year. Hit that like button and of course leave a comment. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.